Hi girls, last class we would have looked at different tests in food. So we would have a look at the food tests for proteins, fats, starch and sugars. Now we will be moving on to the energy value in food. This way we will be able to work out what is called the calorific value to tell us how much energy is in the food that we eat. So we will be following along from page 24 in your textbook. How much energy is in your food? The amount of energy a food provides the body with is sometimes called its calorific value. We will commonly call it the calories that food has. The calorie is the old term for a unit of energy. And what that depends on is the proportion of carbohydrates and fats that food contains, right? Because as we know, carbohydrates and fats are what the body converts into energy for the body. So a method that we can use to find out how much energy food contains is to burn a sample of it. So we'll be looking at activity 1.9, the calorific value of peanuts. I will attach a simple video showing you how the calorific value of, a varia of various types of food was found. So I'll attach that YouTube video for you all so you can take a look at the experiment, um, how it's actually being done and the results that they are obtaining. So you would have used peanuts, a retort stand and clamp, thermometer, water, a boiling tube, measuring cylinder, Bunsen burner and a mounting needle. So you can read through this as we follow along. So this is what the setup would look like. Right now in the boiling tube, we are going to put water in it. The mounting needle um, is just to hold the peanut in place. Right. So what you would do is that you will set up your apparatus as shown and we are going to burn the peanut. So you're going to hold that burning peanut under the boiling tube and keep it there until it stops burning right so you basically want to burn out the entire peanut if it goes out then you need to relight it using your bunsen flame so as soon as the peanut has stopped burning you need to measure the temperature of the water so you're going to measure the temperature before you start and then you're going to measure the temperature of the water after the peanut has burned right now that change in temperature is what we can use to figure out how much energy that peanut had right and what we realize is that it takes 209 joules of energy to raise the temperature of 50 centimeter cube of water by one degree celsius now as you all progress and if you'll choose to do science integrated science or physics and chemistry biology in upper form you will actually learn the entire formula to calculate this. This is calculated using E equal MC delta theta. So if you'll ever come across this formula later on, that is what we use to calculate energy. So we are not letting you all calculate the energy right now. So we are telling you how you can go about doing it. So on average, it takes about 209 joules of energy to raise the temperature of 50 centimeter cube of water by one degree, which is why in the boiling tube, we would have put 50 centimeter cube of water. So if the temperature increased by two degrees, then we are going to multiply two by 209 and that will tell us how much energy was released by the peanut. So that will give me 418 joules. It's also good to take a note on packaging, what it says, right? And this is a really cool fact, right? On food packages, you might see 10 calories, but you need to look on top. Sometimes you will see 10, you'll see KC on top. So that actually means kilocalories. So if we have kilocalories, kilo is by 10 to the power 3. So 10 is really 10 by the power 3 which will give us 10,000 calories and so on. So that's how we can work it out. All right. So 
typical nutrition label at the back of packages will tell us what is going on with different types of food groups that we have and how much calories it contain. Typically, what they will tell us is how much a portion of it contains. So a packet of snacks might actually be, let's say, 500 grams. But the nutrition pack, the nutrition label will only tell you, in this case, for 100. So, and it will tell you number of servings is equal to 5. So it means the, if you want to get the amount of calories in that entire pack, you need to multiply it by the number of servings that the pack has. So that's something to keep in mind. So what I would like you all to do is go through this and you are going to answer question one, parts A, B and C. And we will be looking at it in our next session. I want to talk a little bit of body mass index or BMI. The BMI is a measure of a relative size. Now this is based on a person's height and their mass. Right. If we look at it, BMI typically is a chart and there's a range of values. If you are underweight, it can tell you if you are overweight or if you are obese. Another important thing about BMI is that it only considers your height and your mass. It doesn't take into consideration any other factors. So that is something that you need to pay attention to, right? Um, because it does not mean that you are not healthy or that you are not fit, right? Because as they say, it takes no account into your build or the muscle that you have, right? And muscle weighs more than fat so a person who is very muscular might from the bmi chart look like they are obese but in reality it's muscle mass that they have right so that's the same thing i was telling you earlier the bmi of somebody that's very muscular so they are using a sports person as reference the bmi of a sports person might suggest that they are obese but because their bodies carry a lot of muscle that will increase their mass but they are not obese they are actually probably more fit than you and i so you are to take note of what does bmi mean so it means the body mass index and it's a measure of the relative size that is based on a person's height and mass if your BMI, these are typical values, as I said before, if your BMI is less than 18.5, you are considered underweight. If it's between 25 and 30, that is overweight and obese is over 30. So you are looking at between 18.5 and 25 to be normal body mass index. I would like you all to use the BMI chart that is located higher up in the chapter and you are going to answer these questions. Now I am going to post this work as an assignment. So when you answer these questions, you are going to either answer it in your notebooks, take a photo of it and upload your answers, or you can type up your answers on a Word document and you can save it as a PDF or as a word file and upload it onto Google Classroom for me. So that's two activities you need to complete within this session. So this is due at the end of class today, right? So no later, I'm leaving you all until about 3 p.m. No later than 3 p.m. This should be submitted. This is work for you to do in class, right? So I'm gonna repeat it. It's question one and two on page 27 using this chart. And then you have to do question one, part A, B, and C on page 25. So those are the two activities for you. So we will be looking at weight gain and weight loss. So we, when we looked at the digestive system, you would have noted that everything that we eat is going to be broken down and our body is either going to use some of that energy produced by the food or it is going to store it 
or it is going to remove any excess all right the more go foods you eat remember go foods are carbohydrates and fats than our body needs if we eat more than what our body needs it is going to store that excess right carbohydrates eventually break down into sugars which get stored in our body right and our body doesn't need a lot of carbohydrates it does not need a lot of fats right so anything that is too much especially if you are not doing enough physical activity to use up the calories produced or given by those food groups then your body is going to store it right so that is why so many people become overweight and if a person who is overweight continue to eat more go foods than they should be then they will eventually become obese because your body is going to be constantly storing the excess and it's going to add up and it's going to increase your weight over time so the joule is the modern unit of calculating energy we still use the calorie right if you as i said before if you look at the packaging of products we still tend to talk about how many calories it is how many calories we should consume and stuff like that right anytime you are talking about diets balanced diets we still use the word calorie so foods can be classified as high calorie foods or low calorie foods and in the unit we have also looked at the amount of nutrients that a person needs based on their level of activity when we were looking at diets and balanced diets right so people who have office jobs and stuff like that they are going to be needing less calories because they are not as physical outside there they do not have a physically demanding job right another thing is that older people also need to reduce their calories because they are not as active as they would normally be right so their body doesn't need the same amount of calories that it needed when they were younger so this you're going to read through this chapter right i'm just pointing out some of the main things for you to take note of right as people grow old and retire from work they become less active if they become less active and they are not compensating it with e with energy sorry with exercise then they cannot take in the same amount of foods that they would normally do and it's not necessarily with the amount of food i eat a person eats but it is the type of food they eat so instead of eating a large amount of high calorie foods right like fry foods oily foods fatty foods they can take on same high calorie um same serving of food but it can be serving of low calorie foods so more vegetables more healthy fats more healthy foods so it's not like they are going to be starving themselves but they need to eat the right types of food all right so this here is an example of a low calorie meal so it's a mixture of different types of vegetables right and um you can read this little fun fact on your own and you can also look at this little green box here showing you some low calorie foods from a cafe's menu so you are to take note of high calorie and low calorie foods now you are to go through this question here part a and b but you don't need to submit it to me we will be looking at this and we'll be discussing it in our next session i will be checking to see if you have done the work that you needed to get done all right in our next session we will be continuing with fat or thin so you can start reading it up we will be discussing lifestyles and diets and all of those fun things so our next session is going to be next week next week monday so please read through these things and have all of your work completed during this session